Hello and welcome to Art in Our Front Yard. Today we're talking about Art at the Jetport, and several of the artists who've made artwork here will be talking about their work and their process. Hello, welcome to the Portland Public Art Committee Art in Our Front Yard talk. Today we're going to hear from Wendy Klemperer, who is the artist with several pieces at the Portland Jetport. These pieces are called glints, and you may have noticed them. There are several deer, a wolf, and a porcupine that are all along the access road to the jet port. Wendy has a studio in New Hampshire as well as in Brooklyn, and is very well represented in collections around the state of Maine. Got it? Yeah. Hi, my name is Wendy Klemperer. <laughs> I'm here to talk about my work. <laughs> My installation glimpse is at the Jetport, along with um, sculptures by other main artists, Jay Sawyer, Jesse Salisbury, Andreas von Huyn, Cabot Lyford, um, and several others. The installation came about because June Lacombe and Paul Bradbury and Lynn Lisberger and the Portland Public Art Committee were all working together to have a collection of sculpture that was representative of Maine artists or about Maine itself. So my work um, is about the wildlife of Maine and I have imagery of deer, uh, a wolf, a porcupine, sort of a range of wildlife. And some of the materials that I used actually came from uh, construction sites in Maine also. Um, other work at the Jetport is um, done by artists that are um, very well known in Maine and also uh, some of the work re references aviation. So those are the themes, Maine artists, aviation, or other things to do with the state of Maine. I grew up in Boston and then moved to New York in 1980, but ever since then I've been spending summers in New Hampshire. I went to art school in New York City at Pratt Institute. My first experience in Maine was actually um, going to the Skowhegan School up in Skowhegan, the, the Skowhegan School of Painting and Sculpture, but that was way back in 1984. I tend to spend a lot of time in nature, in the wilderness, or, and I've always been fascinated by animals and animal behavior and had a lot of involvement with uh, animals, my family's summer home where I can see a lot of wildlife. And I've, over the years, I've been interested in, in conveying the expression of animals' movement in these sculptures. And my real focus is on expressing their emotions through their movement, since animals don't communicate verbally. These sculptures try to express emotion through motion. I first started working in steel quite a long time ago. I had been working with tree branches to make large sculptures, but they kept falling apart. So I decided to learn how to weld to be able to make work that could withstand being outdoors and could really last. I ended up working with um, salvaged steel partly because it was very cheap and also because I would drive by construction sites and see these piles of twisted up metal, and to me they were very evocative. They had a lot of gesture in them, much more interesting than something I could make myself. And so I, I go around collecting piles of rebar, mostly when I can, at construction sites, or sometimes I go to uh, scrap yards and actually have to pay for it. And I take truckloads in my truck home, and then when I'm working on a sculpture, I tend to weld together a very simple armature and then use these piled up pieces of scrap metal, selecting different curves as I go along and cutting with an oxyacetylene torch and then welding with an arc welder. It's easy to weld pieces in place quickly and stand back and look, and so I can essentially make a three-dimensional gesture drawing that way. And then as the form develops, then I go back and I weld more and make it more concrete. But it tends to be a very fast gestural process. About 10 years ago, a friend told me about June Lacombe and recommended I 
get in touch with her and see if she was interested in my work. I started exhibiting with her, I think in 2005, and we hit it off. She tends to focus on outdoor sculpture that uh, has a relationship to the landscape. Much of it's abstract, but sometimes it has some figurative or animal imagery. Over the years, we worked more and more together, and she organized several one-person shows for me. One was at the Coastal Maine Botanical Garden in Booth Bay, and then a related show was at Maine Audubon the following year. The title of the show was Reimagined, and it developed out of, um, I was collecting and making, collecting existing sculptures and making new sculptures for this show that actually had 21 pieces throughout the landscape. And as we were developing the show, we realized most of the imagery that I was working with came from extirpated species, species that don't exist in Maine anymore. They're not extinct, but they're just not here anymore due to loss of habitat or hunting and other causes. Um, so my imagery, a lot of it was wolves and elk and lynx and mountain lions. And interspersed, I had also many sculptures of animals that still do exist in Maine, such as deer and fox and porcupine. Um, but the idea of the show was to reimagine wildlife um, coming back to Maine and also how it used to be and this sort of over life-sized skeletal imagery um, was, I was trying to evoke the experience of wildlife in people's imagination. My installation at the Jetport, Glimpse, came about because June Lacombe and William Hamill together developed an idea of donating a group of my work to the Portland Public Art Committee to be exhibited permanently at the Jetport. And they worked with Lynn Lisberger and other members of the Portland Public Art Committee to um, figure out this installation. We ended up having a group of uh, ultimately 10, 10 sculptures. It started out with eight, but then a few more were added on later. And they're placed along the entryway drive to the jet port. And there's sort of these rolling green hills. And the pieces are set back a little bit and placed in very naturalistic, uh, it's sort of a very naturalistic setting. It's not um, a sculpture sitting there on a base. It's more of these pieces that you essentially glimpse as you drive by on your way to the airport or from the airport. And it's a lot like sighting wildlife itself, where you see something out of the corner of your eye and then you realize that it's there. The sculptures have this way of sort of appearing and disappearing before your eyes because they are, uh, they're this network of lines and you can see through them and the landscape is seen through them. And they sort of blend in and pop out depending on the light that falls on them. And they change a lot, obviously, uh, depending on whether it's snowing or sunny and all that stuff. So it can be a bit of a discovery to drive by and see the pieces. In this iteration, the pieces are more representative of Maine wildlife and sort of welcoming people coming to Maine to sort of excite interest about the wildlife in Maine and, and uh, welcome visitors. I believe that June Lacombe and William Hamill, who's a collector who had already collected some of my work, came up with this idea together of having a group of my work there. I think that they discussed it with Paul Bradbury and I believe Lynn early on and other members of uh, the Portland Public Art Committee. And just they felt that that was such a good site for the work and the Jetport was going through this renovation and um, they felt like it could be sort of a landmark piece and very relevant to sort of the state of Maine and the idea of it being such a, you know, still filled with wildlife and, and uh, <laughs> um, something like that. <laughs> Should I say that again?